Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kimberly Edwards with cookingwithkimberly.com. And today I wanted to share with you what I was doing. Um, basically, I'm just bopping about the house and I'm doing my little work online and chores and stuff like that. And one of them was uh, to check the fridge. So today I looked in there, I have no room, so I have to get rid of some of my leftovers and that's cool with me. So we'd made a duck a couple days ago and it was delicious and beautiful and lovely, but there's no more meat. But I want to keep the carcass so that I can make stock, duck stock. Um, also, I have the duck fat that we'll be using. It's been rendered off the bird so that we can use that for baking. That's cool too. Um, all the stuffing's been taken out. Uh, we do that usually the first day. We take everything out of it. And then you, you know, you eat on it for a couple days. So today what I'm doing is I'm just going to show you how to make a quick stock just while you're around the house and doing stuff. You don't even really have to babysit it much. It's really simple. It's great to put into uh, sauces and, and all kinds of soups and stews you can use it for. Beautiful stuff. So I also always make sure that you boil that that neck, the duck neck or the chicken neck, if you get one, or turkey neck. I always, I like to give the meat on it to the dogs. It's, they love it. It's a little treat, but it's great. It's rich in oil and, and all kinds of beautiful stuff that you want in your um, and you want in a stock in a nice stock so that's gonna go in as well today that whole carcass okay so this is just a pot on my stove just pick up the carcass as best you can all one piece that's awesome I'll be right back hold on <laughs> So that's in the pot, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just cover it with water, cool, cold water, okay? You're gonna put this on till it just covers your bird. And you wanna make sure that while you're boiling, or while you're simmering it, I should say, it's going to still come just above your bird and you want it to simmer. Okay, what else do you put in there? Well, you're gonna want an onion, that's for sure. So I'm going to use an onion. And today, instead of discarding all the skins, I'm going to remove the outer layer of ugly, nasty skin that could be dirty and whatever. And uh, we are going to keep the inner layer of skin on because it's a trick I actually learned from my mom that it keep, gets your stock a little bit darker and richer in color. So that's pretty cool. And that's what I'm going to do today. There's one in. And I'm just leaving them in whole because this isn't going to be a soup. It's it's straight up just going to be a stock, okay? Because there's no meat left. So peel those outer layer off till you feel comfortable putting it in there. Okay, that goes in. I'm going to put a couple cloves of whole whole cloves of garlic. You can leave the little nub end on if you want, or you can just chop them off. I'm going to put in about four. These will either just totally disintegrate into the stock and you won't even notice it's there anymore, or you'll be able to fish them out whole. It just depends on how long you let it go and if you move your stock around a lot. You don't really need to. You kind of let just let stocks uh, set and forget. You just throw them in and you don't stir it up. You don't do all kinds of crazy things. You just make sure it's simmering and it's covered with water. And I'm going to put some celery in, just chunks of celery. Okay, that's about enough. Any day, I would always put, always, always put carrot. However, I ran out of carrot this afternoon while I was cooking, and that's okay. We're just gonna have to deal with no carrot in my stock because I don't have time to go. And that happens sometimes, but if you can, please do put a carrot in your thing. Um, you'll really enjoy it, you'll like it. Uh, sometimes if you wanna make it a little bit sweeter, a bit more rich in color at the very, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes from the end, this will go a couple hours, by the way. Um, about 30 minutes from the end, I'll put like maybe a sweet potato all chunked up and then I'll pull them out of there just to get the color and the richness and a little bit of sweet sweetness. So I'm gonna turn this on and I want to bring it up to a boil. Well, not a boil, I shouldn't say that. Thank you, that was scary. And it's on. Um, so we're going to bring it up to a simmer, uh, just a barely rolling simmer, okay? Uh, and you're going to let that go for, I don't know, maybe three or four hours, something like that. Then what you can do is you can fish out all the stuff, all the, the carcass and the bones. You can strain it. 
um, so that there's no floaty, funny, weird things. Um, and then you can reduce it some more if you want to. If you want to concentrate it some more, or if it's not quite as concentrated as you want, you might want to reduce it some more. Just let it roll, simmering boil, the same thing as you had before, until it just reduces in, in volume, and that intensifies the flavor, right? You can put them into ice cube trays. And freeze them and put them in a Ziploc bag. You can grab a couple of them at a time when you need them if you want to make rice or sauce or something like that. Um, what else can you do with them? You can just freeze them, totally freeze them in a jar or a, like a, you know, like a yogurt container or a Tupperware or something like that. You can do that or you leave it in your fridge maybe for about, I don't know, five days or so you could probably use it. You might want to use it pretty quick. Um, if you're going to make a soup or a stew or anything like that that you're going to need, or maybe even gravy, you can use that stock for. Um, it's as simple as that. Now, I'm just going to bop around the house, put some spices in. Let me show you what I'm going to put in. And uh, let that roll. Check on it a little bit. Just make sure that there's no weird things. If there's any um, uh, impurities in your ingredients, like, I don't know, dirt or whatever shows up, weird baddies in your food uh, that you purchase at the store. It floats to the top, kind of makes like a foam a little bit. You scoop the foam off, get rid of it. That's it. Simple stuff, guys. So I'm going to put a couple bay leaves in here and maybe about eight whole peppercorns or so. Yep. And my, my mom and my grandma always did it, and I do it too. Um, it gives that je ne sais quoi, I don't know what. Um, in soups and stews uh, and stocks, they put clove. Like one, like one clove just changes the flavor profile just a little bit, gives it that hint. I can tell when it's not in something, and it's just something I'm used to. I, I, look, I look for that little tiny nuance that my grandmother and mom have passed down flavor of our food. So that's that. There's a stock. You're going to let it go for a little while. Whenever you feel like it's ready, taste a little spoonful of it. Make sure it's got enough salt and pepper, you know, all that good stuff. Salt and pepper, here we go. A little bit of salt in here and let it start going. Right? Simple stuff. If you want to add some fresh herbs, um, you can do that. Parsley, you can add uh, thyme, marjoram, Boy, anything you want out of your garden, whatever you feel like. You could even add some ginger to this if you want to. That would be really nice. A very nice stock to deal with. And yeah, Brazil today, I don't know, kind of an Olympic mood. I'm Canadian, but I like my Brazil shirt today. And who have I seen that's Brazil that won? Well, yesterday, uh, the Brazilian guy won on rings and gymnastics. Very good, Mr. Brazil man. In four more years, you'll have Rio de Janeiro to show off at, so. Very cool. I guess that's what I'm representing today. So that's how to make a stock. Go on, try it. It's not hard. <laughs> it's easy to do. You can use up your carcass. You don't feel bad. You're just throwing all kinds of stuff out. You can use it to the very end of its entirety. You know, don't waste a chicken. Use it up. And uh, follow me on uh, Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. And like the fan page. It's facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. The website again, cookingwithkimberly.com. I hope you eat deliciously. Ciao, ciao, guys. Bye.